trillion million billion trillions of orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs a flat fact a flat fact i'm human and that's a flat fact hey there welcome to my channel a flat fact there are some things we believe in or want to believe in no matter how thin the evidence Humans as a species are very trusting. We can be sweet and we can be very naive. Now we're not going to rehash what we talked about on the panel last week. We debated global warming. Two of the people did not believe in it. Oh, no, one person didn't believe in it. Two of them didn't believe in evolution. Uh, you know, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. You see, that's the... <laughs> I'm just saying. That's very good. I'm not sure what Neil deGrasse Tyson's idea of true or false is, and since much of science is deemed theoretical, meaning not a flat fact, I would consider theoretical a grey area between true and false. This guy, the media's astrophysicist on television, says, the good thing about science is true, whether or not you believe in it. Well. I'm going to show you a flat fact about the atom that you will know to be true. It is an undebunkable flat fact. Scientists are only human too. Everyone has been mindwashed, including Neil deGrasse Tyson. In this video I will show you the link between the 1940s comic superhero called the atom and the atom we have been taught. And this evidence may make you question what CERN is actually doing. You may question what is really going on in those buildings called nuclear power plants. You may question what is really being registered on a Geiger counter. And you may understand now why the term atomic weight has been changed to the term atomic mass. And I will show you what the periodic table looks like now. Before nuclear energy and nuclear bombs, there was atomic energy and atomic bombs. I was born in the 60s. In my lifetime, my family, my children, and all the humans, all life, has been under constant threat because of the atom. The word atom comes from atomus, which is Greek meaning indivisible or the indivisible piece, meaning the smallest thing there is. Our official history declares the atom was first theorized by Democrates in the official timeline of around 340 BC. Fast forward about 2000 years and the science of the smallest thing ever, the atom. Scientists with official degrees have published copious amounts of documents and tests. Learned men write about nuclear fission, radioactive decay, neutrons, protons, gamma photons, quantum theory, quarks, etc, etc. If you don't know or remember, you can easily avail yourself to this information via the Earthwide Internet Library. Our official history, that being published by what is considered authorised sources, tells us people said they split the atom and created fusion in 1938. People from the American military said they dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima in 1945 and another atomic bomb was dropped in the air over Nagasaki. Many people died that day, and most of the Japanese people who died probably didn't even know there was a governmental war going on. The media published photographs in newspapers. In April of 1986, the media reported there was a disaster at the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl located in the Ukraine, said to be the worst human-made disaster in history. In 2016, the media reported another nuclear disaster, this time at the Fukushima power plant in Japan. Now let's go back to just before the Second World War. In 1938, the German scientific community proved the Greek philosopher wrong by splitting the atom. Fission, the basis of the atomic bomb, was discovered in Germany under the Nazi party less than a year before the beginning of the Second World War. The new spread of the atomic fission breakthrough surprisingly quick to the United States. The story goes many of the ex-German physicists, including Albert Einstein, were very concerned about the potential danger of this atomic breakthrough. Albert Einstein writes personally to President Franklin Roosevelt, calling his attention to the matter. 
Official history records that Roosevelt wrote Einstein back on October the 19th, 1939, informing him that he had set up a committee consisting of civilian and military representatives to study uranium. Roosevelt's approval of uranium research in October 1939 was based on his belief, his belief under advice from Einstein, as Roosevelt was not a physicist or even a scientist. His belief, I quote, that the United States could not take the risk of allowing Hitler to achieve unilateral possession of extremely powerful bombs. This was merely the first decision among many that ultimately led to the establishment of the secret Manhattan Project. From October 1939, atomic research became a well-kept secret and a matter of national security. Interestingly, just a few months later in early 1940, the fictional superhero The Atom first appeared in the All-Star Comics issue number 3 entitled The Atom also known then as Al Pratt. On his chest you can see the image of the atom structure we have all come to know. All Star Comics, who later became the media giant DC Comics after the mergers, obviously did not hear that President Roosevelt had deemed atomics a matter of national security and secrecy. During this video I've shown on screen many pictures of the atom now I will show you the link between the comic superhero The Atom and The Atom from your science textbook. The picture on the left is the comic superhero The Atom and the picture on the right is the real Atom. The image on the left is called a cartoon as seen in small books called comics, that being a line drawing, in this case, coloured in. The image on the right is the atom as seen and taught about in school, scientific and physics textbooks, encyclopedias, newspapers and on television documentaries. The image on the right is also a cartoon, that being a line drawing, in this case also coloured in. You have never, ever, ever, ever seen an atom. You have never seen a photograph of a real atom or seen a real atom, but you assume that a scientist somewhere with a super expensive microscope must have seen an atom. No human has photographed or ever seen an atom. Flat fact number one, in the realm of the real, every image of the atom that your grandparents, your parents and you have ever seen are drawings graphical representations of the theoretical and scientifically modelled atom. Flat fact number two, the reality, the flat fact is, you cannot see anything smaller than the shortest wavelength of light you can see it with. The atom is smaller than the shortest wavelength of light we can see. It is visually invisible. Flat fact number three, an atomic force microscope is not an optical visual microscope. It takes measurements of the wave data and a program, programmed by a coder on a computer, maps out this waveform to a pretty image. In 2013, this image was presented in the media. It states it is a photograph of a hydrogen atom captured by a quantum microscope, which is a device capable of seeing into the quantum realm. This is not a photograph. This picture is a digital image. Stoll Donner and his colleagues image the hydrogen atom's wave function by measuring an interference pattern on a 2D detector. A quantum microscope doesn't allow a human to see into the quantum realm. Again, it is measurements of wave data interpreted by a program on a computer turned into an image. Another way to visualise an atom is using light. When light from a hydrogen gas discharge tube is passed through a prism, the light is split into four visible lines. Every element has a unique emission spectrum, as shown by the examples here of helium and iron. If you are not up to date, the periodic table has changed a little. 
the term atomic weight is no longer used and the new terminology is atomic mass. The periodic table looks quite different now with this new information. This picture, again a picture not real, is a visual representation of the light spectrum of the different elements. Hmm. Classical physics theory was unable to explain this existence of atomic emission spectra, also called line emission spectra. It is fascinating, you can look that up. Stoll Donner and his colleagues, and now many of their peers, believe now that the atomic emission light spectra was more proof of the quantized nature of light and has led to a new model of the atom based on quantum theory. Hmm, does that sound to you like the new model of quantum theory may be based on light? So this new model, again model not a flat fact, is now visualizing elements atomic mass as a light spectrum. So do you think quantum computers will be based on an unseeable quantum particle or maybe the reality is quantum computers will just use light. I'm sure you were taught the speed of light is a universal constant. Well, not too much research and you will find much, much bodging of figures in the past decades with regard to the speed of light. Those scientists who were getting differing results thought it was their experiments that were faulty. Just a few years ago, scientists started to reconsider and that from recent experiments, the speed of light may not be a constant. Look it up to verify. All those telecommunications are laid of fibre optics, light carrying information very fast through tubes. Sometime in the future we might have quantum light computers if some clever person can work out how to keep them cold enough. As well as a few other things I've been programming for decades. I, like many other coders, have waited patiently for quantum computing. On the 12th of December 2017, Microsoft launched a preview of a new programming language for quantum computing called q -sharp. Microsoft also released a quantum simulator that developers can use to test and develop quantum algorithms. So yay, coders get to play with a quantum simulator. As quantum computers require cryogenic temperatures and a cryogenic state is assumed at minus 150 degrees Celsius or minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit, a lot of power is required to keep it cold. A lot of power. I don't think the electricity bill will be affordable for most homes. As you've seen in this video, the atom image anyone has ever seen is a drawing or a graphical representation. It is an undebunkable flat fact. The atom is just one example of how drawings and graphical images have been presented to us as real evidence. Theoretical models shown by the media to people as a flat fact. Now you've seen all the atom images are just drawings. Maybe you'd like to check out the drawings of the theoretical Earth's core? Perhaps the drawings depicting the theoretical continental drift? Perhaps the media published historical documents with words and drawings that have been presented to us as flat facts of our history? And maybe have a re-look at those images of Earth from space. Thanks for listening.